Howdy folks, welcome back to another episode of The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, The Michael Jingles. This, The Michael Jingles, did I really say that? <laughs> I've forgotten who I am. <laughs> the might, well the not so mighty Jingles, I can't remember my own name. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll, we'll edit all that out. <laughs> anyway, welcome. Uh, to another episode of The Good, The Bad and The Ugly with The Mighty Jingles. Not quite as mighty as he thinks he is. This is Minio, and he is driving the premium Tier 8 Tank Destroyer. The Pac-43... Oh my god, I nearly did it again. <laughs> the Pac-43 Tiger 88. Now, what we have here is a situation that's all too common in World of Tanks. He's recognised that his team are just lemming training up the other side of the map. And instead of doing what most people would do, drive down this uh, eastern road alone, complaining that his team are noobs and then dying by himself, he's holding up on the corner and digging in, ready to defend. Which is a good position for a machine like the Jagdtiger 88. But this Jagdpanther 2, another tier 8 German tank destroyer, has other ideas. He wants to go up the road and he wants to fight. Now, there's artillery in play here. And the Jagdtiger 88 isn't a very fast machine. And so Minio is understandably cautious and reluctant to follow the Jagdpanther 2's example. And he's trying to get this guy to fall back, but the Jagdpanther 2 wants to go up the road. And he wants to fight. And he's already starting to take hits. Now, at this point, Minio has a choice. He can either leave him to his fate, or he can go up there and back him up. He makes the decision to go up and back him up, but it's going to take him time. Performance-wise, the premium Tier 8 Jagdtiger handles more or less like the completely stock Tier 9 Jagdtiger, but with a slightly better than stock engine. It's not fast at all, but this is a road, it's not particularly rough terrain, so he is able to make some relatively decent speed up in order to support this Jagdpanther. Takes a hit from the Hellcat. Starts bouncing shots from the Comet, bounces a shot from the KV-1S. Hellcat desperately backing off. Suddenly, these guys aren't feeling quite so brave. Now there's two Tier 8 tank destroyers facing off against them. He kills the Hellcat first, he has the most dangerous gun. And then he finishes off the Comet. Now there's a Tiger P turned up as well, and that's not all. But this is what makes the premium Tier 8 Jagdtiger so special. It's the rate of fire on this 88mm Pac-43 gun. Fresh out of the box, before you even fit ventilation or a gun rammer, this thing fires a shot every 5.4 seconds. That is a phenomenal rate of fire. And it soon adds up. The Black Prince down there is really starting to feel the sting. With a gun rammer and ventilation, my premium Jagdtiger 88 gets a shot off every 4.56 seconds. By contrast, the Tiger at tier 7, which has the same gun, and is renowned for the rate of fire on that gun, manages a shot every 8.96 seconds. The rate of fire is almost double that of the tier 7 heavy Tiger tank. This thing pushes out a damage per minute of 2,667. Not as good, of course, as the tier 7 Russian tank destroyer, the Su-12244, with its absurd 2,925 damage per minute, but, hey, Russian. <laughs> so, in the time that it took me to tell you all of that, he's done over 3,000 damage, with a gun that does 240 average damage per hit. Rather than pushing on down the road, he's leaving that to uh, some guys who finally turned up when it was far too late. He's pushing over the ridge here, and opening up on this very, very unfortunate IS-3 who's managed to get his tracks blown off, pinned into position, with a Jagdtiger 88 and a Jagdpanther 2 shooting at him. But then suddenly, an enemy Jagdtiger 88 appears. Now, Minio's going for the guy's front drive wheel, trying to blow his tracks off and immobilise him so he can't turn the gun around on him. But the enemy Jagdtiger 88 is, uh, he's not falling for that old trick. He uses his repair kit, and these two stop blazing away at each other. But Minio knows something that he doesn't. He's got a Jagdpanther 2 on his right flank. <laughs> Chaffee goes screaming up the middle, trying to flush out enemy artillery. 
and again, instead of going with the flow, Minio decides, mm, yeah, slow machine, plenty of other tanks heading up that way. The majority of the enemy tanks that are still in play are all coming down the western flank. So instead of trying to beat the chaffee to the enemy artillery, he lays upon the corner, ready to start putting some flanking fire in these guys as they threaten the base. Contrary to popular belief, this tier 8 premium Jagdtiger with a Pac-43 gun is actually a more faithful representation of the real Jagdtiger that did exist in the Second World War than the one that you get at tier 9. The tier 9 Jagdtiger has as a stock gun the KWK-44 128mm gun, and that is the gun that the Jagdtiger was designed to use. The fully upgraded tier 9 Jagdtiger, however, uses a gun that the real Jagdtiger never had. However, this guy that you have down here at tier 8 using the KWK-43 88mm gun did actually exist. There just weren't enough of the 128mm guns to go around, and so the second batch of Jagdtigers to be produced did actually use this KWK-43 88mm gun. This gun on the firing range was capable of penetrating 132mm of 30 degree sloped rolled homogeneous plate armour with its standard armour piercing capped ballistic high explosive ammunition at a range of 2 kilometers. Toss some armour piercing composite rigid ammunition in the barrel and you could up that penetration to 153mm and it would hit a target at that range measuring no more than 2.5 by 2 meters, 89% of the time with its first shot. This was an absolutely deadly anti-tank gun. Now your biggest nightmare when you're driving one of these things is coming up against fast nimble little buggers like Chaffees and Type 64s at close range because if they get around you you're dead meat. But once again Minio knows something that the guy in the Type 64 doesn't. There's a Chaffee coming back to save his ass and he kills the Type 64 after Minio plants two shots into him and nearly kills him himself. Now he's free to come up behind this very unfortunate IS for a spot of surprise butt sex. Remember, surprise butt sex, best kind of butt sex. <laughs> and again, goes for the tracks. So he's got to turn that big, lumbering, slow, stupid turret around and he just knows that there's no way he's getting out of that. All that remains is to finish off the artillery but it's a BERT, an FV-304, and a Jagdtiger 88 is not going to catch an FV-304, unless the FV-304 is going to come to the Jagdtiger 88. And what are the chances of that? Well, you might be surprised. Bit of a spoiler. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. This just was one of those golden games where absolutely everything went right. Uh, the tanks that he was facing off against at the start were just cannon fodder for him. Uh, he had some fantastic backup from the Jagdpanther II who stayed with him to take out the IS-3 and the other Jagdtiger 88. A Chaffee had his back against the Type 64 and the enemy artillery comes right towards him <laughs> when he had absolutely no chance of catching him. So he, he does manage to get one more shot in, but the Chaffee takes the kill and well done to him too. So that was Minio with 6,212 damage done in the Tier 8 Premium Jagdtiger Pac-43. So far on The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, whenever I've shown you somebody doing something really, really stupid, it's usually just because they didn't know any better. That Object 140 has no excuse for what he's about to do. He's played 27,000 games and he has a 60% win rating. He is good at World of Tanks and he has absolutely no excuse for doing this. And he's now blocking the AT-15 from retreating. Was that deliberate? Keeps him in place long enough for the T-71 to blow his tracks off. FV-215B183 reloads and finishes him off. And then he drives off. Was it accidental? Was it deliberate? Well, let's see what he has to say in chat. Yep, it was deliberate. It was a deliberate blocking which led to a team kill from somebody who should know better. He claims the AT-15 was blocking him. Well, it kind of looked to me like he was blocking the AT-15A from firing and then he was blocking the AT-15A from retreating. But let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's have a look at that again from a different angle. 
So, AT-15 fires. Object 140 moves and blocks the AT-15 shot. The AT-15, who is zoomed in, not fully aware of how close he is to the Object 140, but even so, the Object 140 is entirely capable of getting out of the way. So the AT-15 was not actually blocking him, and, uh, yeah, yeah, the votes are in, the judge's decision is final. The Object 140 is, in fact, an arsehole. This is not the first time this sort of thing has happened to our friend in the AT-15, who felt compelled to send these replays in as an example of the kind of despicable behaviour that he regularly sees from players with very, very good stats. That T-57 Heavy just had to move two feet forward in order to clear line of fire from the AT-15, which unfortunately had to turn around because he doesn't have a turret. And oh no, he's made him do it twice. AT-15 has no idea there's a T-57 Heavy behind him because he's zoomed in, he's shooting at enemy tanks. He can't see what's going on behind him because he doesn't have a sniper view that points out the back of the tank. You'd think that after playing 27,000 games, the guy in the T-57 Heavy would understand this, but no. And he is in fact so pissed off that the AT-15 made him move forward two feet in order to take a shot that he's going to issue a stern warning to him in chat about the consequences of doing that again. And there it is. Next time you block me, you'll be shot. What a douchebag. Spoiled little princess who thinks that the entire universe exists for his gratification and his gratification only. And, you know, if you think about it, it shouldn't really come as any surprise to find that people who are very, very good at online multiplayer gaming can also be some of the biggest dicks you're ever going to come across, because some of those very qualities that make people good at online multiplayer gaming, hyper-aggression, extreme competitiveness, well, they also make you social cancer. It's not always the case, of course. Um, just to name two examples off the top of my head, guys that I regularly livestream with, Quickie Baby and Circumflexes. They're very, very good at what they do, and they're also really, really nice people. But it shouldn't come as any surprise to us that a lot of the people who are good at this sort of thing, well, the tanks, for example, in this case, are also complete wankers. And once again, a whole bunch of friendly tanks got some enemies cornered. The T-57 Heavy at the back of the pack, he is the one with a clear line of fire. He is the one who can see what's going on, and he team kills the AT-15 for getting in his way again. Never mind the fact that three other friendly tanks were also getting in his way. No, he'd warned the AT-15, and he carried out his threat. It was actually the enemy tortoise that got the killing shot, but the T-57 Heavy seems to think he's the one who killed him because he deliberately put two shots into the back of Tank Annihilator's AT-15 because he was blocking him again, and he then proceeds to lecture him in chat about it. Yeah, sure, that's right, he was blocking you from 50 metres in front of you. <laughs> and you know what? This is not an isolated incident. The IS-7 that this cockmuncher is platooned with is possibly even a bigger arsehole than the guy driving the T-57 Heavy. Get a load of this. They're chasing the last kill. All right, there's an enemy Waffentrager still up there. And if you ever wonder how it is possible that utter wankers like these two manage to have such good stats, well, look no further. Watch the IS-7. Object 140 is going to get there first. You can see his gun barrel pointing. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, really? Did he, yes, he really did, just to do that. Deliberately team-killed the Object 140 so that he could get a top gun. IS-7 had better watch out, though. He did just block the T-57 Heavy from taking a shot. He's liable to team-kill him in the next game they play. What a pair of cocks. Here's a little game that was sent in by Shabaterion in the Tiger. He's actually platooned up with two others. There's uh, Silence by 22 in an SU-152 and Krilla 340, who's in a T-29. They're all in Tier 7 tanks at the Tier 8 match here on Siegfried Line. Interesting feature of worldoftanksreplays.com is that if you upload a replay, it automatically links to the replay files of everybody else from the same battle who also uploaded a replay. So I managed to get this from the point of view of all three of the members of the platoon, and you're going to see why that's important. 
Hellcat, in a spotting position out in the field, has just lit up his first target, T-43. And it looks like that ELC has also just been spotted. He's changed his mind about heading over the tank traps, and instead he's hightailing down to where the T-43 was spotted. T-43's gone, however, but now an IS pops up, so everybody switches their fire to the IS. First shot misses, probably went low and hit the ground. Everybody else, however, doesn't miss. Everybody on the platoon has hit this guy. Shabaterion takes the kill. There's an ISU-152, who's pinned down in position behind that bunker at the back end of the field over there. He doesn't really have a shot at the ISU, takes it anyway. ISU ducks. Waits for the ELC to get out of the way, gun reloads, and everybody starts pouring it in to this very unfortunate T-43. One swift can of whoop -ass later, the T-43's dead, and the Hellcat is wishing he was somewhere else. Now they've lost their ELC, so nobody's spotting the Hellcat anymore, and he disappears from view. Shabaterion takes a blind shot, misses. Acryla 340 in the T-29 takes a blind shot and doesn't miss. So there's kill number three. We're going to stick with uh, Krilla for a moment here as he pushes up into the centre of the town. ARL up there, trying to back off. Not nearly fast enough. Now he's died in a useful spot. And Krilla in the T-29 is going to take full advantage of that because you can use him to keep his hull covered up and protect them from return fire against all those enemy tanks in the centre of town. Meanwhile, Silent Spy in the SU-152 and Shabaterion in the Tiger push around the corner. Switching back to Krilla, T-3485 there keeps trying his luck against a mostly hull down T-29. Not a smart idea. Meanwhile, Shabaterion and Silent Spy, or well, Shabaterion donks his first shot against that Hellcat. Silent Spy almost obliterates a KV-2 around the corner. Krilla still dug in behind this ARL, still putting fire into these enemy tanks. KV-2 still reeling from the shock of being hit by that 152mm high explosive shell as Silent Spy pulls back. Shabaterion finishes off the KV-2, takes a hit from the Carnarvon. Hellcat putting fire in on Silent Spy's SU-152. Then the Carnarvon, well you really did not want to get yourself tracked sideways on to an SU-152. <laughs> Your worst nightmare. Now it's just the Hellcat. Is he going to poke? He is. Not much of a shot, but Shabaterion kills him anyway. Suddenly, a wild SU-100 appears. Shabaterion uses Long 88. It's super effective. <laughs> it's another kill. Meanwhile, while all this is going on, Krilla in the T-29 has not been idle. He hasn't moved much, but he doesn't really need to. Because he can just kill tank after tank after tank. Hold down, using this dead ARL as cover. So, he's just nailed himself his second kill. He moves up looking for the killing shot in the T-29. T-29's having none of that. He lets his friend take the hit. As Krilla backs off... Well, it, it must be the day for shooting at KV-1S's, because another low-health KV-1S appears, and there's Krilla's next kill. The other T-29's backed off. He thinks he's safe. Unfortunately for him, Silent Spy has some 152mm surprise butt sex planned for him. Krilla rushes forward to finish off the KV-1S, and gets surprised and tracked by the lone surviving enemy T-29, which is just party time for Silent Spy in the SU-152, as he manages to plant another one into the KV-1S as he tries to pull back. Meanwhile, Krilla, he's having a bit of a struggle with this enemy T-29, but lots and lots of support rushing up to help. Back to Shabaterion, who's just spotted you know, out there in the field, the enemy ISU-152, and nails himself a top gun. Loads and loads of support arriving to assist Krilla with this T-29. He gets the final shot in and takes the kill. Were you counting how many kills the platoon managed to get during the course of this game? There's Krilla's post-battle results screen. Crucial contribution, brothers in arms. Four kills. Silent Spy's post-battle results screen. Crucial contribution, brothers in arms. Three kills. And last but not least, Shabaterion's post-battle results screen. Crucial contribution, brothers in arms, and Top Gun. Between the three of them, they scooped seven Battle Hero Awards and killed 13 
of the enemy tanks. There were only two tanks on the enemy team that this platoon did not kill. That's not a bad day's work. As always, folks, take care on that battlefield, and I'll catch you next time.